Hey guys, Kid Air Burn One bringing you a new deck profile. This one's going to be on a Konosuba Freeze deck. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the most competitive deck, but it's a really fun deck to take if you do like team tournaments or something. It's probably a really fun deck to take with you um, if you trust your other two teammates to carry you. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, the way the deck works basically is uh, the main focus is the freeze event card. Um, for those that don't know, it's basically time walk like in Magic, except it's a very, very heavy cost. The deck itself kind of plays itself kind of like a plus two soul deck where you're trying to basically get tempo uh, from playing this effect and then uh, use out tempo your opponent too much where they can never catch back up and then they just lose the game because they don't have the resources you do. Um, so let's get into the deck and then I can explain a little bit more. This is the deck itself. Uh, we play a lot of zeros and level ones here. Um, we, our main focus here is the freeze event and the one zero Megumin 5-5 uh, five five that has two soul. Uh, those cards in combination are what gets us there basically. And then we play the level three Megumin uh, at three for uh, the game finisher because of the timing you play this, usually your opponent is fairly uncompressed because of the tempo of the game's going and they've had to spend a lot of stock to get themselves back into the game or what little stock they did get a build so they usually don't have time to compress themselves well let's get into the level zero game uh, we're pretty heavy on the zero game because we want to play uh, a lot of good effects and build some extra stock early we generally want like one or two stock going into level one at least minimum so uh, to make sure that we're able to get the freeze event off and uh, any other special effects that we want to do. Uh, all the cards here basically give us some kind of advantage at zero to help us either build hand size or filter our deck or get us basically to mill more cards in our deck so we can find the freeze card faster. Uh, we play the runner for more hand advantage and it's a runner so you definitely want it and it has a great effect also which is you can on play you can discard a climax and salvage a character that helps us uh, fix our hand a lot and also get certain cards we need immediately we play the salvage brainstorm because we have a lot of mill effects basically so um, this helps us just get back cards we want to see often or we'll see often in the waiting room uh, the bottom card on the left there is the Darkness Runner. It helps us beat any level 0 game and some one level 1 game that ha basically uh, that are level 1 at 0. So uh, if your opponent plays some like uh, plays 1-0, uh, or I'm sorry, 0-0 uh, zero, zero that gains 1 level and it's like 3-5-4k, this card will beat it every time. It also runs in front of things to mess with your opponent, so you can choose to run in front of uh, cards to either take less damage or force them to the side and stuff like that. The card itself has been uh, pretty mediocre for the deck overall. It's a card I'm actually consider cutting, but it, in some cases it like gives you such a big advantage because sometimes your opponent just doesn't play around it very well. I guess is uh, what happens a lot. But uh, hoping your opponent will make the mistake like that isn't always something you're looking for. I guess. And also sometimes we have a little bit too much yellow. Uh, if we do get color locked at one and get like double yellow instead of the yellow red then we get kind of sad sometimes especially right when we hit one um, next we play uh, the darkness support up there it basically just there to build this hand size early make sure we get to one in a hall so help us unscrew ourselves if we get to level one and we are color locked um, this gives us extra chances to get the right color usually the color we're looking for is red sometimes because uh, our main level one game is red and that's what we want to really play. Next we play for Cosima because it top checks and, uh, and ditches, which is great. But um, also it bonds to the freeze event, which is the most important part of the deck. So it can generally build us uh, uh, one character and one card, which is great. And it also it does in combination work well with the brainstormer and things like that. If we do end up hitting like a climax on top, we know to just immediately brainstorm. Uh, now, finally, we play four of the Mill Megumin cards. Uh, when I go to the rate waiting room, we can discard a card, then top check four, add one to hand. That's a uh, magic trait. Basically, everything in the deck's ma magic trait except for the event and the darkness cards. So um, you almost never miss. But I mean, it can happen. But usually, when we're playing this, we're just playing this to mill our deck completely because uh, we're either canceled a lot early or. You know, we just need to fill up our uh, waiting room so we can find uh, other cards we need, basically. 
Next, our level 1 game. The main points of the deck are here. So we have the level 1 Megumin. Uh, it's a 1055, but with 2 soul. And has the effect that at the start of your encore step, you reveal, your opponent reveals the top card of their deck. If it's level 3 or higher, they can choose to put it onto the field anywhere they like. So normally this is a downside, but uh, we do run the 1-0 counter that uh, on, pl on play we can discard two cards from our hand and uh, kill one of your opponent's uh, higher level characters. So the downside for the 1-0 actually isn't that bad. And if your opponent misplays into it, like early summons a level 3 and then attacks with it first, or like not even for a second because they're making horrible mistakes today, and you play this on them, you build such a huge tempo advantage there. They lose a stock, they lose damage, and they basically wasted a character for no reason, so they got no advantage out of them being able to play a level 3 early. What's also nice too is because it doesn't come from the hand, a lot of effects don't trigger. So if your opponent um, is level 3 already, or they can play that level 3 early and they need the effect, but they choose to um, play it off field, you know, they lose out on all those uh, effects that level 3s have, which are usually really strong. Next, we play two one zero um, Megumin bombs. Uh, they're kind of there as like a little bit filler uh, whenever we do play freeze and we need to kill something that we can't normally kill because our, our level one game is so weak. We just uh, play the bomb, kill it, then the following turn uh, from after using freeze, we'll have an empty slot, so that's an extra soul we get there at least. And then also it has encore, so we can kind of just keep it there uh, if need be. Finally, we have we play four freeze because we absolutely need to see this card. Uh, four might actually be the wrong number. We might actually only want to play three, but I'm more afraid with the, how this deck is designed that if you don't see the freeze early on, you'll just get really sad. There was one game where like four, all four freeze cards were in like the bottom like eight or ten cards of my deck, and I, and that was a really sad game. Even though I think I still won that game if I remember correctly. But basically, freeze is time walk, but with a really heavy cost. It's uh, pay one, put this into level zone, discard three cards from your hand, and then you can take a turn, extra turn after this. So the idea is, basically, we're playing this card after like the first like two turns of the game. So your opponent probably has two to three stock um, going into the turn you play this. What happens here is usually around that time of the game. Um, most people generally are out three to four climaxes at the timing of this card that's played and if you want you can actually wait like an extra turn and then play it after that to see where they're at but generally they're out three to four um, in some cases they're out, out a lot and you just uh, win the game after this but um, you take an extra turn you build a lot of stock because of this we play the one zero Megumin with the two soul to get extra soul damage in so if they are out a lot you're just like hitting them for two 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 or three 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 which really really hurts them and then uh, we build a lot of advantage through this because we get to build a lot of stock where our opponent only has two to three stock and usually by the end of our freeze turn uh, our second turn your opponent is usually high level twos maybe if you're lucky um, they're at level 3 and what happens there is even though they're at that state where they can start playing level 3 Start playing like the bigger cards. They have no resources really to take advantage of the fact that They um, they're at level 3 and we have a lot of weak stuff So like even if they have clock kickers and stuff like that at most they can play like one if they're at level 3 because they have like two to three stock um, If they are there they don't have a lot of stock to play with too to use effects like brainstorm and stuff and ways to mail their deck that cost you know resources so it puts your opponent in a really bad slot that's why i think this deck is um if anything it's more of a tempo deck than anything kind of similar to a plus two stole plus two soul style in the sense that um, we're using this effect to build us such a huge advantage tempo wise that our opponent just loses because they don't have the resources to keep up with the game um the final part of the deck is our level three and level two game Basically, um, the reason we play the level 3 Megumin is it has the on play top check up to 3, add 1 to hand, so we don't lose hand size. Um, some games will end the game with 7 cards, other games will end it with like 2 cards in hand because of the cost and resources and um, just the way that the game played out. Some games we just, just have so many cards because uh, we didn't have to really uh, clear anything on our field, basically. But um, it's a good way to get cards in your hand. Also searches out for climaxes, which is great because uh, we don't really hold on to anything in our hand. This When we play this deck, we only kind of play what we have when we have it. Um, some games you will hold on to one level 3 Megumin. 
uh, most of the time too uh, because of how the timing works we only have six stocks so at most you'll only get off two megumin level three combos if you do it anyway and then finally we play two of these two one uh, support megumins that whenever another one of your characters gets reversed you can give a character 3k um, that affects not super relevant uh, but it does help out sometimes the secondary effect which is uh, the brainstorm the reason we play it because we're trying to push to end the game as quick as possible with how this deck works because we have so much resources and our opponent doesn't we want to capitalize on that so the brainstorm effect is pay one tap two mill four for every climax you hit your opponent burns x amount where x is the number of climaxes so in this case um there are turns where you go in you like you know you're not going to be playing the level 3 megumin uh for whatever reason i play the combo and you slam one of these and you end up brainstorming like three times in one turn and burning your opponent for like six overall which is uh one way i have won the game before was um brainstorm three times and each, each time i actually hit like two or one or whatever and then they just took it and lost uh, it's a good way to kind of push to close out the game, especially if you can kind of get your opponent, if you know you're going to do the Mega Wing combo, and you know, at least have the resources, and you can put them in range where the clock kick will kill them. Or, you know, uh, you put them at like 3-3 um, three, three through the 2-1 effect, and then they take any of the 4 damage from the Mega Wing level 3, they just lose. Which is uh, always fun, and makes people mad. A lot of people get really, really salty playing against this deck it's like the whole reason I, I play this deck whenever uh, I'm not looking to 100% win the tournament uh, it's just a really fun deck to play that's why I think it's a really fun deck to play in like 3v3 events because um, you have two other people to fall back on but this deck is actually uh, pretty consistent on what it does so it's not like you're dead weight completely so let me just bring up the whole deck here again for you guys um, I did play this about uh, played this deck about 15 times. Uh, one one of those uh, times was in an event uh, where I actually got I think third or fourth I forget. Uh, one thing about this deck too is towards the end of the game you got to be really careful about um, making sure you do precise damage at end game. Uh, I made the mistake. Uh, I think the two games I did lose um, in that event were because I forgot to include the refresh damage in my calculations so i over swung for one and that extra one always was the cancel unfortunately in that event um but this is actually a really fun deck it's probably something worth trying out it's probably really really cheap too outside of the level three megaman everything else should be like a dollar or less or actually you know what the runners and stuff actually cost money but the deck should still be like under 100 bucks i would guess um, things to do when you do first play this deck uh, anytime you get the darkness uh, support early um, you just want to hurt yourself and get the one zero you want to just get three one zeros into your hand as early as possible because your whole game plan revolves around that card going off with in combination with uh, freeze so those are some things you want to search for if you know your opponent runs a lot of level threes and um, you always want to search out the one zero counter early make sure that you don't end up milling it or something then it gets a little bit harder to get you have to use in combination of Kazuma and the brainstormer to try to get it back or use the level uh, zero runner to ditch a climax and get back the one zero counter um, you also uh, if you can early on just go ahead and play the 2k Megumin level zero there in the bottom right hand corner so you can mill your deck some that way uh, build some stuff into your waiting room and if you throw a freeze in there uh, at any point you have a Kazuma, you basically have Freeze in your hand, and uh, you can also top check and uh, filter your hand a little bit and possibly plus off of it because you can brainstorm. It's like kind of like your brainstorm sees five cards instead of four, essentially. I think that's it about the deck. If you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and leave the questions in the comments below, and I'll try to answer all of them. And then hopefully I should be releasing a few more videos. I'm doing a Love Live Sunshine um, case opening. I'm basically gonna be opening a case of the new Extra Booster set. I'm only gonna op keep opening them up on a video until I open all four signs. I heard there's only four signs per case instead of all nine girls, which is kind of weird for an Extra Booster. But I'll go ahead and do that. That should be uploaded sometime within like the next three or four days, I'd assume. And then I have a couple more uh, deck profiles coming up. I have uh, an Abyssal deck I'll be releasing soon. So anyone in English that just got a hold of Abyssals has some idea on a uh, deck build that's worth running in tournament. And I had one more lined up. I think it was another um, 
well, I'll be having my new updated Love Life Sunshine build, uh, Mirai Ticket build coming out too. But I think I had one more, one more, uh, oh, Persona 5. I have a Persona 5 tech profile coming up too. I've been playtesting Persona 5 a lot recently uh, in preparations to play it in English for the English offense coming up this year. And I really like that deck. It It's super consistent. It makes people mad. And I just gotta have a lot of fun playing that deck. So that should be coming out soon too. Hopefully within this week we'll have all those videos out. I know I've been kind of AFK for a while. I went to a lot of cons. I went to Sakura Con and also went to uh, ASEN. So I've been really busy with that and I moved into a new apartment. I'm finally, finally, finally basically done moving into my new apartment. So uh, a lot more videos will be coming out soon. Well, see you guys in the next video.